Brucham Aboyim, thank you very much for coming, attending. Uh, welcome to our home. The uh, topic that tonight on my thoughts uh, is patience. Patience. <laughs> Something that every doctor wants. Well, but what about the rest of us? Do we really have patience? But before we answer that question, we really need to ask ourselves, do we really need patience? Interestingly enough, we look into the, if we look into the creation of the world, God created it in such a ma manner that initially, everything that man wanted, he had, an inst he had instantly. Adam and Chava, first man and woman, had marital relations. Then they immediately had a child, no nine-month pregnancy. The only patient self-control that they needed to exhibit was to not eat from the tree of knowledge. According to Kabbalah, all they had to do was just wait three hours. Then they could have eaten the fruit, a grape, squeezed it, made wine. Then they would have made kiddush on it. From that time onward, then it too would have been permitted for them to eat. So what was the act that brought death into the world? Impatience. Adam couldn't wait three hours. After man sinned with the tree of knowledge, he was banished from the Garden of Eden. He was then forced to live a life based on a foundation of patience. He no longer had a choice. He now would be forced to learn to patiently wait for everything that he had, even the day of his death. He was no longer immortal. Again, at the giving of the Torah, Mount Sinai, God, in his capacity of a loving, as a loving father, gives the children of Israel a second chance. He cured all those that had contracted any physical injuries or maladies, a result of their oppressive slavery in Egypt. He forgave all their sins, going all the way back to Adam, first man. Then he blessed them and they were once again immortal. So now Moshe goes up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. He tells the people he'll return in 40 days. Moshe is late in returning. He's Jewish. And in their impatience, they make a golden calf. Once again, they lose the blessing of immortality. But they are once again taught the lesson by God, the importance of patience. So how did God exactly do, teach them that? After breaking the first set of tablets, Moshe spends another 40 days on the mountain asking God to forgive the people for the sin of the golden calf. God finally agrees, and he tells Moshe that since he had broken the first set of tablets, that he should hew out two new tablets of sapphire, and that he should bring them up to the top of the mountain. And there, God Almighty would engrave the Ten Commandments on them once again. As a sign to Moshe that probably that God had forgiven the nation for their grievous sin, God instructs Moshe to have the people build a sanctuary, what we call a Dira Betaktonu, a dwelling place for God to live amongst us on earth. The people were thrilled, and they quickly donated all that was needed for its construction. Just three days later, they began the construction on the 15th of Tishrei, the day we celebrate as the first day of Sukkot. They worked tirelessly and with great enthusiasm. Then on the 25th of Kishlev, they finished the construction. There was a great excitement as the camp as they waited to erect the structure. They wanted to put the portable sanctuary, God's house, into commission. They tried to put up the tabernacle themselves, but it wouldn't stay up, it wouldn't stand. So they went to Moshe asking him why 600,000 men couldn't keep the structure standing. However, to their dismay, they were told by Moshe that God wanted them to wait. Their sin had come about through their impatience and their tshuva, their repentance, would now have to come about through patience. Think of it. From the moment of conception, and many times even until the moment of death, we have to wait. There are many things in life that we just can't rush. We've learned to make things faster, such as microwaves or convection ovens when cooking our food, cars, trains, and planes to make our travels faster, cell phones, computers, and the internet to increase the speed and efficiency of almost everything that we do in our lives. But still, we have to wait for the buzzer to go off on our microwave or oven, for the train or plane to reach the terminal or our destination, 
for the elevator to reach our floor, and for our computers that are supposed to save us so much time, somehow, every time I go online, I spend much more time there than I thought I would. Or the familiar statement, I'm sorry, but our computers are down right now. We can see that God's original plan of creation was by looking at the demands of a newborn child. When a baby's born, they don't ask. They demand, and whatever they want, they want it now. They don't understand why they have to wait. They come into this world just as God had created Adam before the sin. We have to teach the newborn child patience. We teach them to be polite. They must learn to wait their turn. That will not necessarily change their thoughts, but it will teach them to hide their desires. Teach them how to live together with others in a society. Again, the art of patience. Before his death, Yaakov, our father, blessed all his sons. The blessing that he gave to his second and third son, Shimon and Levi, was Ara Apum. Cursed be their anger. He cursed their anger, not them. And then he suggested their salvation. In verse 49.7, as it says, Achalkem b'yakov b'afitzem b'yisroh. I will disperse them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. What Yaakov meant by this was that their inheritance would be dispersed among the other tribes of Israel. Levi, with 48 Levitical cities, equally divided between the 12 tribes. And Shimon, whose portion was spread out throughout the land given to the tribe of Yehuda. Both were given professions as school teachers, a profession that demands patience and understanding. Yaakov understood that we do not accept our challenges, our addictions. We need to confront them. Impatience leads to anger and frustration, a recipe for disaster. It brings with itself a storm of negativity and tears. Yaakov understood that the only way to overcome our challenges is for us to train ourselves again and again, to learn to control our emotions and not let our emotions control us. It's a process. We need to stay the course. Putting ourselves in trying situations such as teaching young children or dealing with the sick and the elderly demands one's patience. Uh, but the benefits that are gained are gained mostly by the teacher or the caregiver. They benefit the most. No more ulcers or headaches. Hopefully, they can be replaced with a warm and friendly smile, a feeling of calm and not frustration. Not all of us are quick and or efficient. To some of us, the motto is, why rush? I remember taking a tennis lesson when we were on vacation in Jamaica. The instructor kept telling me over and over again, slow down, man, slow down. Well, that is great for a vacation. But what about life in the real world? Do we learn to slow down or at least deal with others who live their lives on a totally different speed? We spend a certain amount of our time in life waiting. When I served in the U.S. Army, the motto was, hurry up and wait. It seems that somehow, no matter how efficient we try to be, we always wind up waiting. Traffic lights, checkout lines, rush hour, calling for technical assistance, taking any form of public transportation. And then, yeah, then there is our spouses and our children. You know, I love when I hear people say, that opposites attract. To me, it makes absolutely no sense. Why would you want to be with someone who sees everything in life different than you? And yet, knowing that, I too married someone who was totally opposite who I am. Now, initially I thought that God had A's marry B's so that he could be have some entertainment in heaven after what he have to do. So he's watching all in the family, comedy. But then I came to the realization that God's purpose in matching A's and B's together was for both of them to grow and make each other much better, happier, and more complete people, a true and a better C. And then there are children, and God bless them all. When my wife and I were young and foolish, we thought that we would bring up our two children. <laughs> we found out the same thing that all parents find out. God has given us our children hand-picked, so that we can grow. As the saying goes, more than you bring up your children, you bring up yourself. 
They should call child uh, rearing a boot camp for learning patience. It's amazing how many times a child can ask the same question over and over and over again. So there is a solution. So, so is there a solution for an impatient person to survive in this world? <laughs> or are we just doomed to live a life of ulcers and headaches? You could try to train everyone around you to be more efficient. Well, good luck with that. I'm sure that your four-year-old son, four son will turn over a new leaf. A better and more reasonable solution may well be to change the only thing in life that you really have any control over at all, which of course is ourselves. The last thing that we want to hear and the last thing we want to change. It's much easier just to blame it on others. After all, why should I change? You know, I'm far from perfect. And just ask my wife. You know, I once heard a Torah lecture from a Rabbi Avigdor Miller. May he rest in peace. He said that while you are impatiently waiting for your wife, rather than complaining and getting frustrated, getting into an argument, carry a safer, a Hebrew book, and study it while you wait for her. Utilize the time in a productive manner rather than letting it become destructive. I have tried to follow his wise advice, and now my wife takes credit for most of the learning that I have attained, the late Mrs. Goodman. As I've mentioned in previous thoughts, we all have challenges. Whether you were born with a slower and more relaxed personality or are challenged with an impatient and easily frustrated personality, we all need to be aware and considerate to those who are different than we are and not try not to make their lives any more difficult than it has to be. One of the most difficult challenges for an impatient person is to find a place in their mind where they can accept someone else's relaxed and laid back attitude. Many times it's just seen as arrogance. Why should I always have to wait for them? If you can fix the problem with tact and forethought, well, great. Then it's really not a problem. But if you only put up with it, trying to ignore or not really dealing with your frustration, those feelings may well fester inside you always lurking in the background. Then one day, you lose your temper. All that built-up frustration just breaks out, and it may be totally out of proportion to the situation at hand. So, if possible, why don't you try to talk out to frustrations, especially with their spouse and relatives, relations that you have to deal with constantly. In frequent relationships, well, they're much easier to navigate. Timing is everything. So be patient and wait for the right time to discuss an issue that is affecting your relationship. Always remember, they say that patience is a virtue. The reason for this statement is that impatience is a minefield that is a reality of life. The truest test of our patience is the fact that we are patiently awaiting the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu may he come quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for listening. And if anybody has a topic they would like to discuss, please contact me on my website and I'd be more than happy to look into it. Again, have a great week, healthy week, safe week. God should bless you and your family with only good. Thank you very much again for listening.